We're going to look at chapter 19 and then verse 13. And he was clothed with the vesture that was what? Dipped in blood. blood. Wait a minute. His vesture is going to be dipped in blood at the bottom here. So notice that his bottom garments over here, they're going to be dipped in blood. Why? Because he's coming down, bam, like that. And then because he's coming down like straight, bam, like that, the blood's going to go reach to the bottom of his garments over here. Let's keep reading. And his name is called the Word of God. Wait, then that is Jesus, is it not? Look at John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1 and 13. John chapter 1, verses 1 and 13. That's Jesus Christ. God manifested in the flesh. So that means that when he is set up as king of kings and lord of lords, that he's going to have to be worshipped. Mohammedans don't believe Jesus is God. They're going to worship Jesus as God. They're going to worship him as king. They're going to bow down before him. Jews, they deny Jesus as the Messiah, but they're going to bow down before him. Jehovah Witnesses do not believe Jesus is God. Mormons too. They're going to bow down before him and worship Jesus as God. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was who? See, Jesus is God. Look at John chapter 1 verse 14. 14. And the Word was made what? Flesh and what? Dwelt among us. Isn't that Jesus? When did God dwell amongst human Flesh amongst people. See, the only answer is Jesus over here. Okay, let's return to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. Okay, so when we compare this with Revelation 6, there are several differences we know so far. One, in the writer in Revelation 6, you can go back over there and compare. The writer in Revelation 6, his name was not given. Whereas Revelation uh, 19, it comes with different names, many names. Another one is that if you look at Revelation 19, this is the end of the tribulation, this white horse. Revelation 6, it's what? Beginning the tribulation. If you look at Revelation 19 again, it's a one-time battle at verse 15 where he wipes out all the nations. If you look back at Revelation chapter 6, you notice he's conquering and to conquer. See that? It's an ongoing battle and war. It's not a one-time battle. Look at verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven, what? Followed him upon white horses. Ah, so it's not just Jesus Christ. Someone's following, following Jesus over here when he comes down. When he comes down out of heaven... Someone's following him. An army, that's you over here, the Christian church. Remember, we're up here, right? Then we go through the marriage supper. Then we are like Jesus Christ. We're sons of God. And then what? We come down with him. Be, uh, how do you know that? Because keep reading here. The armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed, with, clothed in what? Fine linen, white and clean. Who are the people who are dressed up in fine linen, clean and white? Verse 8, the wife, the bride of Jesus. See, that's the Christian church. But remember, who's joining us at the wedding? It's the tribulation saints, right? So they'll be following along as well, because remember, they've, they've also got white garments as well. Look at Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. Revelation 7, 14. So the bride is dressed up in white garments, and then the guests of the wedding, they're also dressed in white garments as well. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. See that tribulation, saints. And have washed their robes and made them what? White in the blood of the Lamb. Go back to Revelation 19. 
You can let go of Revelation 6 now because I think we already proved that the writer of Revelation 6 is not the same writer of Revelation 19. You've got to remember that. Oh, one more thing I want to say, uh, which I've forgotten, the distinction. If you look at verse 15, verse 15, you'll notice that Jesus Christ, that his weapon is a sword. And then if you look at Revelation chapter 6, the weapon of that white horse is a bow. It's a bow, not a sword. The Lord Jesus Christ, his weapon is a sword that comes out of his mouth. And then we'll read a little bit, uh, we'll read a little bit more out of that one, okay? Okay, so let's look at the book of Revelation chapter 19. And then we'll read verse <clears throat> 15. Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. So notice the sword comes out of his mouth. Did you see that? Amen. It comes out of his mouth. And that sword out of his mouth is going to be used where he's going to be smiting the nations, actually. It's going to be used to kill the people that go against him. Look at verse 15. Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. See, I told you so. Self-explanatory. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Okay, so the Lord Jesus Christ, with iron, the Lord Jesus Christ, with this rod of iron, he's going to rule over all the nations. So it's a, it's, it's a hard rule. You notice that? It's an iron rule. It's hard. It's firm. It's going to be like a military dictatorship. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. This blood is known as winepress. It is like the blood of grapes. And it is known as wrath. Now, did you recall from the Revelation teaching or did you forgot? We're going to look at several passages. We're going to look at the book of <clears throat> Psalms chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 63, and then we're also going to look at Revelation 14. Again, the passages are Psalms chapter 2, Isaiah chapter 63, and Revelation chapter 14. Notice that the scriptures are overloaded. It is overloaded with passages on the second advent. The day of the Lord is the main theme throughout your Bible. The main theme throughout your entire Bible is the day of the Lord. It's not salvation by grace through faith. It's not the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. It is actually the second advent. There are too many verses on that. Look at Psalms chapter 2. And look what they try to do against the Lord. Look at verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. See that? That's the Antichrist army. They're saying we're going to go against God. But look what God says. Look at verse 9. Thou shalt break them with a what? Rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. No kidding, he's dashing them like potter's vessels. See, Psalms 2 is not talking about some nice ditty devotional. This don't sound like a nice ditty devotional. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh, the Lord ha shall have them in derision. That don't sound like a nice devotional. Speak unto them in his wrath, verse 5, and vex them in his sore displeasure. That don't sound like a nice ditty devotional. Verse 11, serve the Lord with fear. That don't sound like a nice ditty devotional over here. Notice over here that this is, uh, this is wrath. This is a scary time. They all try to go against God, but Jesus Christ uh, dashes them like a potter's vessel. Look at Isaiah 63. Isaiah 63. You know, uh, the blood of grapes symbolize the blood of Jesus Christ, right? Grapes symbolize blood throughout the Bible. That's why God, whenever he talks about blood, he'll use the metaphor and the symbol of grapes. 
That's why he calls this wine press. So look at Isaiah 63, verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with what? Dyed garments from Basra. See, his garments are dyed. That is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in what? Righteousness. God is speaking in righteousness. Doesn't that match with Revelation 19? In righteousness, look at the board here, righteousness, he does judge and make war. This is God here. Verse 2, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? So, have you, uh, like Revelation 14, we're not going to turn, turn there for time's sake, because i got to wrap it up. But if you're interested, you can go to Revelation 14. When God wipes out the army, it is like when you're trotting on grapes. When people uh, make wine, uh, they're still doing that today. They're trotting on the grapes. And then reach it, it's so deep that you have to go like this. And then the grape juice is going to reach the hem of your garments. Jesus says that's the same thing when he wipes out this arm, army. It's like this. And it will reach the bottom of his garments. Amen. That winepress is the blood of people. Look at verse 3. I have trodden the winepress alone and of the what? People, there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine what? Anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my remnant, uh, my raiment for the day of what? Vengeance. See, day of wrath, day of vengeance. That's the same thing over here. He rules with the rod of iron, and not only that, the Bible says the armies follow down with him, right? So that means then we are going to have that too. When we follow the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to have that blood and we're also going to have uh, the rule, the rod of iron when we come down with him. If you look at Joel chapter 2, it's even more fascinating. Uh, I'm not going to read it, but you all turn over there, okay, as I finish drawing and wrap this up. So look at Joel 2. Now notice that this sounds almost like Superman over here. You notice that? This is almost like Superman, the Lord Jesus Christ coming out. And then when he comes out, his eyes are as a flame of fire, kind of like laser shot eyes like Superman. He comes from outer space, from nowhere. That's kind of like Superman over here. And then notice that out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that he can rule them with the rod of iron. Amen. So that's why the Word of God, Word of God, the Bible, is likened to a sword. It cuts. There's so much symbolism for a reason. It's pointing to a literal thing later on in life. Joel 2, look at that passage. Notice that these people, that if weapons touch their bodies, it doesn't harm them. You'll notice that they're able to uh, run over the walls, kind of like the Matrix. You'll notice that when they uh, go down, in their path behind them, it looks like fire. That almost looks like Superman. It looks like the uh, DBZ and all these television shows, fantasy shows, sci-fi shows that they try to show you that people want to become. And they don't realize it, that they had it all that time when somebody knocked on their door and offered them that free gift to become like Superman. You and I will become like that. That is what is going to happen at the second advent. And the Lord Jesus Christ, man, he's going to cut off that reign of that serpent. He's going to step on his head. Amen. So off with his head, bless God.